Hello and welcome back to Volumes. Um, today, Lucy is eating a salad. What's in your salad, Lucy? Pff, definitely not healthy stuff. Not healthy stuff? Love not it. Not healthy stuff. Um, you might be able to hear the noises in the background. Got our doors open onto our street in beautiful sunny Spain. <laughs> um, it's actually quite a nice day. Compared to the last couple of days, yep. it's been crazy rain, thunder. The weather here is mental and yeah. the streets are just not equipped for the rain. As soon as it rains, floods. it floods, yeah. And uh, in fact, as soon as it rains, you just get power cuts because <laughs> it rains so heavily and then you get power cuts because like, they're just not suited for this. Although it was a blessing in disguise because our shower hasn't been working properly and we true, finally true. fixed it because the whole system reset, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you might, you might hear uh, some car horns, some screaming people, some wild stuff. Some or salad Yeah, I was going to say some munching. Um, <laughs> but yeah, in this episode, I want to talk about things that have been on my mind, which is basically what all these podcasts have been so far, mm -hmm. things that have been on our minds. Um, Lucy doesn't know what I'm going to bring up. I don't know what Lucy's going to bring up. We're just going to bring up some stuff. It's tangents, but uh, the main theme of the tangents are going to be some stories, and for my for my uh, for my side, oh, really? stories, yeah, things that have happened in Spain that I think we should just talk about. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah. So first of all, we went to a restaurant yesterday. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah. You look oh, confused. Yeah. I've blanked out my memory because it was traumatizing. Right. So. First of all, yesterday we went to an escape room, which was quite weird because we went to an escape room with three other strangers that we'd never met in our life through a group chat for expats in Valencia. That's <laughs> a really weird situation to be in. Yeah. <laughs> but it was actually pretty fun. It was weird to like just be like forced into working with people you do not know at all. Like, and it wasn't just all. a normal escape room. It was a scary yeah. escape room. And I didn't actually realise how scary escape rooms could be. Like, we had to all... How many of us were there? Five. five there was five of us. We had to all five of us lock ourselves in this <laughs> tiny little room and try... And there was, like, creepy dolls and we had yeah. to set them around a table in the right order and there was banging and all. Yeah. It, was just, it was honestly terrifying. One of the guys, he was, like, 30 years old, surely... I, he was scared out of his wits. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah, because, like... <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm not in the group chat. Lucy was like, oh, do you want to do an escape room? There's, like, a games group chat for people in Valencia that are, like, English speakers and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I like games. I like uh, people. I like escape rooms. That all sounds like stuff I'd like. I'm going to enjoy this. Um, so, we turn up. We don't know anyone there, which is fine. But they didn't tell me that this was, like, a horror-themed escape room like everyone else is going into like i don't know like Houdini. yeah like chill um, stuff like mm -hmm. uh, i don't know like magic room like <laughs> fun fun escape land we're in like <laughs> horror house where the family have died and mm. we're being haunted by a 12 year old girl or something like that we walk into the room and it's I'm pitch pretty, yeah, black i'm pretty scared of the dark not gonna lie i hate the dark I and i can sleep see night light, you know i can see it pretty well so in the dark scary. it was so dark that it was like you walked in and i i had no idea if i was even with people anymore it was so dark <laughs> i couldn't see in front of me and then there was like a woman there who was like part of the experience and like would scare us a bit and then leave and then would sometimes like push stuff over without us knowing that she was there and like and then they locked us in a room we had to like crawl through tunnels it was intense um, it was really good though it was called uh, claustrophobia escape rooms if you want to go and i think our room was called um la casa de las fantasmas which is Ooh. house of ghosts oh fantasmas <laughs> is ghosts fantasma that's so cool so cool isn't it? way better name than ghost <laughs> um yeah big shout out to them actually it was really really mm -hmm. fun um but yeah, after that, I'm not even, I don't even want to talk about that. I wanted to talk about what happened after that. <laughs> Me and Lisa went out for dinner afterwards, right? And I want to clarify, I'm, I, I just, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm a particularly angry person. You're not, but I, uh, like Lucy I'm definitely takes, not an angry person. Lucy takes so long to choose a restaurant. Oh, okay. Right. I was like, <laughs> Lucy, just choose, just look on your phone. Just look on your phone, type in something that you want to eat and then go to the one you see, right? So if anything, this situation is probably my fault because I did push that. I, I definitely <laughs> evoked this idea. Um, so we ended up going to a place called Lemongrass. I'm just going to absolutely name drop Lemongrass yeah, on this it. one. I don't know, is it a chain? Or I think it? so, yeah. Okay. They're all throughout Valencia, but right. it must be... 
Spanish I would say it was Spain as well. Oh, right, okay. So it's like a Thai... I, mean, I don't know, I don't know for sure. It's like a Thai restaurant. Yeah. Um, so we go to Lemongrass. It's mm -hmm. in like the city centre, right in the middle of the city centre. So we go there. We sit, uh, we, we go in and we're like, oh, do we, we sit, take a table or what's the deal or what? Can we get a table? Blah, blah. Sat like, yeah, just, do you want to sit inside, outside? It's really abrupt. Not that that's a problem. Anyway, we sat outside. We sat down. Um, we then order our food. Right. First of all, we need to clarify. Lucy is clearly a bigger <laughs> idiot than I ever thought she was. <laughs> Um, this is by far the funniest. Yeah, this is the good. Thing I've ever this done. is why the story's worth telling because it's There's got so some serious layers. ups and serious downs, right? <laughs> so Lucy orders. Um, so basically, you choose your base, which is usually noodles or rice. Yep. And then you add some toppings. Yeah. You choose everything you want to add. And then to lastly, it, you add a sauce. And then a sauce. Yeah. It's like an A B C system. Yeah. So Lucy's A was uh, udon, udon noodles. Udon noodles. Um, which everything comes with eggs, mm -hmm. like um, egg fried rice type, like one. egg noodles, egg not just like with egg. Yeah, no, no, it's not just like egg fried rice because you can get boiled rice with egg, mm -hmm. and you can get egg fried rice with egg, and yeah. you can get udon noodles with egg. Mm -hmm. Everything comes with egg, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Then she ordered um, some stuff. Yeah, she, mushrooms, she had, um, tofu. Mushrooms, tofu, and she said cashews yeah. right and cashews was right next to cauliflower so i'd rehearsed to say cauliflower and you clearly I accidentally said cashews, said cashews mm -hmm. right yeah. also not that big a deal but for context i have a severe nut allergy lucy eats nuts but that's not a big deal because sometimes like some yeah those, i mean yeah. no but i mean you do eat nuts mm -hmm. it's not, like you're, I'm not saying do not eat nuts i've, yeah, I've yeah. never told you not to eat nuts <laughs> you're more than yeah. welcome to eat nuts right um, but when I ordered mine, I said, I want the boiled white rice. I want these toppings that obviously do not contain nuts um, or eggs because I have an allergy to eggs as well. Um, and then I asked for whatever sauce. And I said, I have an allergy to eggs and nuts. I clarified in yeah. Spanish. It also said it in Spanish, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they know I cannot eat eggs and nuts. I have a deathly allergy. I will die if I eat <laughs> Eggs or nuts, okay? Yeah. Um, and I feel like like it sounds dumb saying it sometimes, um, but I, I mean, it makes sense for the story of how important it is. <laughs> um, so then Lucy's like, oh yeah, also, can I have no nuts? Can I have no eggs or nuts? And the woman's looking at her like, what? I've just, she's just she asked for cashews. cashews. <laughs> you just asked for no nuts. I'm like, listen, you're nuts. You're like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> I'm like, order I nuts. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, kind of giggling a little bit. Like, what? <laughs> you lost your mind. The woman looks at me and she's like, all right. Um, like, so I yeah. don't know. She, she just seemed annoyed, didn't mm. she, the woman? So we're Which like, yeah. I understand. <clears throat> Work sucks, you know, like, but when uh, it comes yeah. down to someone having an allergy, you should take it seriously, you know? I, I mean, I'd hope. I'm, like, People have, like, this is a thing, like, that's not, I don't know, I don't know how to word it. It's not like saying, oh, uh, it's not even like saying I'm lactose intolerant. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be, like, passive with people that are lactose intolerant, mm -hmm. but lactose intolerant cannot, as far as I know, kill you because that is why it's considered an a intolerance. A allergy could kill you, but... Exactly, yeah. yeah. An I think intolerance the word is allergy a... has been very skewed and people think that it's something that's just like, oh, you'll just get a scratchy throat, you yeah. know? Yeah, so yeah, a I will... misconception. Uh, like, I will go into anaphylaxis if I eat an egg or a nut. I, my or poison, or yeah, my yeah. poison is just this a slight dust of a nut will kill me. Yeah. Um, which sounds like, I don't know, it's, it's just, it sounds like an it exaggeration. Weak. It sounds <laughs> weak, yeah. It does sound pretty oh, weak if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, it might sound like an exaggeration. That That's the problem. That's the exact problem because it's people aren't educated yeah. about how serious it is and that it's definitely not an exaggeration. Yeah. And I mean, I really don't know the ins and outs of it. I, I, as far as I know, if I eat something, my body treats it like it's some sort of like danger. Um, so if I eat a nut, my body's like, right, we need to protect him, so we're going to force histamines around his body, which will like 
clog up my throat so that nothing can get down my throat, but that in turn will suffocate me and I will die. That's, that's what I got yeah. told, right? And it will like close up my organs and stuff like that to prevent- and it, it's literally within seconds. Yeah. Like if, if Tom, like he got a test when he was younger where they, they put like egg white yeah. on, your, on your lip or on something. On my lip, yeah. Like above his lip and he just I passed out, out cold within, within seconds, like yeah. two or three seconds yeah. and they had to have an emergency button and they were panicking. Like they didn't, like, I don't know if mine's is particularly worse, but it's still so unknown even within like a medical practice how to handle the situation. Yeah. Um, also, stay tuned for a, a one on one on one one on one guide. That's what you call that, right? A full guide on how to help someone if they're in anaphylaxis. Right at the end of this episode. Thanks for. Oh, good idea. Um, so yeah, Lizzie's asked for no nuts on her nut <laughs> food, or nut. Uh, I was I was noodles. fine though because I was like, do you know what? If it does come with cashews, like I, d- I like cashews, I was like, I'm not bothered. It was like, yeah, like yeah. it doesn't bother me. It just me, wasn't so what you, it just you wasn't meant what to for. order. Yeah, and it well, it's what you asked for. It's definitely <laughs> what you asked for. It's just not what I meant. Yeah. I was just embarrassed, but it was so funny. <laughs> it was so funny that when I realised what I'd done, I just spat my water <laughs> all over the table. It must have just been an absolute embarrassment uh, in that restaurant. Anyway, so, so yeah, this woman comes out. Definitely clarified that Tom couldn't get yeah. eggs or nuts. It was a severe allergy. I had stated this in Spanish and English, and he hadn't ordered any. You know, yeah. he hadn't ordered anything. So this woman uh, comes out. Two bowls. Drops one on Lucy's side. Drops one on my side. The one on my side, absolutely without a doubt, no, no hesitation, Had has egg. eggs. Yep, it's covered I smelled in eggs. it. I picked it up. It was eggs. It's greased <laughs> up in eggs. Fried egg everywhere all over the bowl, all between the food, everywhere. Um, and Lucy's like, hmm, I'll have a look in mine as well. This is a yep. bit suspicious. She looks in hers. Yeah. Egg. egg. Just egg. Egg, There's cashews, egg which are ordered, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, cashews, but I mean, yeah, that's on you. And egg. But yeah. eggs, right? I'm like, hmm, yeah, that must be egg. That's definitely egg. So we could say, right, sorry, sorry for the inconvenience. Can't have egg in this. Can't have egg. Yeah, I put. I put Please make sure I was like, oh, there's no nuts. Me. Like he's got, it's a really severe allergy, yeah. and we think this is egg, so he can't have this. And she was like, okay, I'll bring another. And the chef, the said? chef must have not seen the. Oh, nut. she said I wrote it down, but the chef didn't see it. And this like, woman okay. could not have cared. She was at very all. annoyed. Like couldn't <laughs> have cared. We were a, we were a, like an inconvenience to her life. Yeah. We were an inconvenience to her job as a waiter. Yeah. Like for. for Taking, for we, returning a dish which would have killed you. <laughs> I, yeah, it's not like I was like complaining or causing a scene, but I am paying for the food. I don't want the food to kill me. I mean, is that too much to ask? Um, In the meantime, I was like, right, because Tom wanted me to say about mine as well, because mine's had eggs in it. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of that way where I was like, oh, do you know what? Like, it's a lot of food. I don't, I, regular, like on a regular day back home, I would have asked for them to take it back and make another. Mm. But just because we're here and I'm still, ooh, loud car. Um, I kinda I kind of made the decision that I was just gonna pick the egg out and just deal with it, you know, and just not waste the food and just not cause any more of a problem so that Tom's dish could be sorted out. So I was kind of like eating a bit while Tom was waiting on his because yeah. I was starving. I mean, you were hardly even eating it, if anything. Yeah. Like you were, I was you were persevering, but you just, <laughs> It was clear there was no enjoyment in yeah. it. So I was kind of picking the egg out and eating. And then I came across just lumps of chicken in mine. Just yeah. chicken. And there was no nothing stating anywhere that there was chicken in what I'd ordered. Absolutely nothing. I definitely by no means asked for chicken, you know. So I was like, oh my yeah. God, like this, this is not good. This is... They've just given us everything we yeah. didn't ask for, you know. And yeah. like, how could you have made... Like, how could you have been that wrong with it you know how could you have made so many mistakes anyway I just persevered I didn't eat anymore I just kind of sat there like I'm just gonna leave mine um (laughs) I mean okay I I have a question for the audience is it immoral to just not pay just be like nah I'm not I'm not paying I'm just gonna stand up and leave because that's what goes through my mind I'm like she brought out the other plate and she she was just very annoyed, wasn't she? She just wanted to get yeah. away from us, and she was like, "There you go." Yeah. Um, and and she, there was no sorry, no apology no. for bringing out something that could have killed him. I mean, I don't care it's just necessarily sad. for it's the apology, sad. but to, just I want to pose that question, right? If you've ordered something, it's not what you want, and you can't even eat it. Do you ha- Should you pay? 
Should you just, just like stand up and leave? Because I'm thinking, who who's like, who loses out there? Like, I'm not paying her wages directly, so she's still getting yep. paid. And what's losing out? Some big company anyway. So like, it doesn't, yeah. it just seems like, does it really matter too much? But anyway, I'm not saying we didn't pay, we did pay. Um, well, Tom paid, he said, just because he'd eaten it. Yeah, well, I, well so. the next bowl that came out, <laughs> I did eat it because I, I went and you could see the chef make it. So I went and like, how do we eye on the chef? Clean the bowl and everything. So yeah. I was like, do you know what? That's a good sign. I really the bowl. don't think it was the chef's problem. I think that oh, yeah. women had I think the women but... just didn't care. I think the chef was on it. He was cleaning the bowl, the big wok pan thing, cleaned it up, got it all the new stuff. And like, it, honestly, it was really good. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, the service of that woman was terrible though. Yeah. Like, see if you could have, like, I'm not one to like complain about services well, but I was for really service. annoyed. It's just, like, I understand that work can be stressful, I get it, but you cannot give someone a meal that could kill them and yeah. not even say sorry. Like, or just, just, yeah, I mean, why not acknowledge it? Like, If that had been me and I was even having a bad day, I would be so upset. I'd be like, I'm so, so sorry, what can I do for you? Like, And I would, I would offer straight away for the meal to be free. Yeah. Like, well, what worse a thing can you do than nearly kill someone? Do again, I mean? like, I don't even mind paying the food, but, like, you could literally Google right now and get countless uh, pieces of information, articles, and everything on people who have died on, like, airlines, people have died in restaurants, people have died in cafes from eating something that they weren't supposed to eat because. It just wasn't labelled correctly yeah. or it was contaminated or whatever and it just no, no information was given. Like, uh, uh, Pret is really bad for the way that they label information mm -hmm. because a lot of it can be made in-house but they didn't, they're not obligated to label it. Um, this is the thing though. And there's tons it of takes, things like that. It takes someone dying, usually a child dying, for the world to actually pay attention yeah. to the seriousness of allergies. Yeah. Like, after... The whole Pret thing happened. When I worked in Costa, there was a huge change to the regulations. They got different tongs to pick up cakes with nuts mm -hmm. in them and things. And you think, why was this not in place before? Allergies have been around for a long time. Like people have been at risk of dying from allergies for a long time. And they're only now taking it seriously because someone has died. People die all the time. It's just this one got attention, you yeah, know? Exactly. This one got media attention. That was that was it. Um which is incredibly unfortunate that it even has to get to that stage. There should be, like, it should be people, people should be more considerate, I feel like. And yeah. in all situations, not just this, and everything. Why, why not? Like, yeah. that, I think that's the, the problem stems from the fact that everything is mass produced for as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. So one person, one tiny minuscule person gets an inconvenience from it, even to the degree of death. It doesn't matter to them yeah. because it's still all profit. They know how much money they're making and they know how much money they're going to make yeah. from this amount of people rather than just that one person. Mm -hmm. It's that person that, that suffers with something yeah. to deal with it themselves. As unfortunate as to say, it is good that when the, an unfortunate event like that happens, people are loud about it because that is what changes things. Because if but Nothing, I feel like... In my time knowing you, I wasn't educated about it at all before I met you. I did not know the seriousness of it. But in the time where we've been together, nothing seems to have changed other than kind of cafes. The, the managers of cafes are a bit more clued up and gened up on how to deal with it. But for like Tom went on a, he went to Costa and asked for, what was it, a soy chai latte or something? Mm -hmm. And they gave him undoubtedly coconut yeah, milk. Yeah. And you don't, hadn't mentioned your allergy, but the mere fact that they could have mixed up those things when mm -hmm. it's a known allergy and like nut milks and stuff. I know of cafes that just don't wash out their jugs between regular soy milk and nut milk and things like Do you that. Do you want to say what cafes? No. <laughs> you said Costa gave me uh, coconut milk, so I do not want to say what. Oh, okay. Cafes don't well, it was iCafe then. I'll just I say cafe. it. Yeah, and I actually turned down a job there because I just found it revolting how little they cared about it. I remember um, going for a trial shift, and I'd been going there for ages and getting um, soy chai lattes. And I remember asking which of the chai powders, there was like a spice chai and a vanilla chai, and I asked which were dairy free. And they said neither of them. And I said, well, I've been coming here for ages and getting soy chai lattes. And they just laughed in my face. And I was thinking, okay, fair enough. Laugh at the vegan. 
that you've given dairy to, but what if that was an allergy? People that suffer from dairy allergies get soy milk because it doesn't kill them, you know? And then if there's gonna be dairy powder in that in that drink that they get with soy milk, it's your responsibility to mention that it's got dairy in it because if they're going for soy milk, then they can't have dairy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just the ignorance is unreal and they were they were outraged when I turned down the job because of that. And I, I I don't really stand up for myself very often, but I was just so annoyed that a company like that doesn't even take they clearly didn't take on board what I said. They just laughed at it yeah. as in like stupid girl, like who do you think you're talking to type thing. But it won't be funny when it kills someone, you know? Then it'll be a scandal. But yeah, until then, who cares, you know? Who cares yeah. if someone goes into anaphylaxis? Well, it's yeah, horrible. that that is that is the question. Do do people care? But not just anaphylaxis, not just allergies, but in like so many different situations. Like, yeah, it's not hard to be compassionate, and it's not hard to just change your business to suit people who are in like kind of like more special uh, circumstances or predicaments or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um. We should stop trying to view that. I mean, this is my opinion, I guess. I'm just like, like, I guess I'm just screaming and shouting my own philosophies. But I just think that why not just try yeah. and make businesses suit more people and less like uh, grouped situations? Does that mm-hmm. make sense? Like, not just it's, the, it's not the most irris- generic uh, majority, yeah. but people in sort of weirder si- situations. You're or talking about it though, as then like allergies can be a rare thing but they are so so common like severe allergies and especially severe nut allergies they're very very common in people and um i don't know it's just just the western world i feel like it's maybe just the western world that it's a huge thing but i'm probably wrong there um but yeah we should we should explain the whole um situation with um planes as well because i feel like that's Uh one area where i would honestly I would scream at the top of my lungs about it if I, if I would be taken seriously, but clearly it's a long endured problem in airlines yeah. that they just they can't seem to change these regulations. But yeah, I would really I would really like to do everything I can to change how airlines deal with people with allergies because it's honestly baffling. It baffles me so much. Um, and people's opinions <laughs> towards it as well, yeah. how people treat it when they're flying on these airlines, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, I mean... I sound like such a Karen, don't I? But that really uh, does make me annoyed. I hate it. It's not, I feel like that's not like a Karen, like, like, uh, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, these are, I guess, more fair to be upset about in a, in a sense. I mean, I'm saying that because it's my situation, but it's like, first of all, the, the airline situation has got a lot better, like, a hundred times better mm-hmm. in, the, in my time of I think maybe in the last in year especially because this year we've actually it's been okay, right? What do you mean this year? Like when we travelled to Spain um, Well, one plane Yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess Yeah, yeah. it changes So like when I was young when I went on a plane uh, my mum had to phone the airline and say my son has allergies, would it be possible to put in like certain like things to, certain precautions to make sure that he's all right on the flight? Doesn't die. Yeah, make, make sure he doesn't die. Just be blunt about it, you would die, you yeah. know? <laughs> so like, basically just making, the, the best way would just be make an announcement on the plane, can please no one open any nuts? Yeah, so the deal is that on a plane it's different because the air is circulating in the plane, so you're not just getting any old air it's and it's not just that but it's such a it's such a tight like heavy breathing location like yeah. everyone's breathing heavy yeah. if anything's open it's within that plane like there's a dand or two things like peanuts and stuff like that that you can get around the room really quickly yeah they um, go in the vents and yeah. they would be in the air and Tom would eventually breathe it in yeah. and as soon as he breathed it in he would go into anaphylaxis yeah, which, yeah. Um, so yeah the best thing they can do is just say here nobody open nuts right I mean, if someone opens nuts, then I'm sure they would be like, I don't know, they would, I don't know, feel the brunt of something. Yeah. And it, it used to be a go. norm for people to be served peanuts on a plane, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? And I think it still is in a lot of airlines. They I will get know, yeah, packets maybe. of peanuts served to everyone on the plane. Um, so when I like started flying myself or like with Lucy or whatever, 
Um, I, uh, I had to say, I had to do the same thing. I had to phone up the airline and say, hey, I have an allergy. Would it be possible to make an announcement? Ask um, people not to open nuts. Yeah. To not the, serve nuts on the flight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I would even state, like, don't, you don't need to make me a specific meal because I know it's a thing that would make people uh, specific meals, like if they have intolerances and stuff. I'd say, no, don't even worry about that. Like, I don't want that. Yeah. I, I don't mind bringing my own food and stuff like safe. that. I just want to go on the flight. I just want it to be a mode of transport. I don't care how fun that trip is. I just want to get to the destination. That's all that matters yeah. to me. Um, so, like, I've literally been turned away from airlines. I've been told, no, don't come on. You're not Just, allowed. No, yeah. do you, like we do not allow people with allergies on this airline. Um, <laughs> but um, we went on uh, Air France. Yeah, when we were going to Rome. From France to Rome. Yeah. Um, and we got on that flight. Your uh, mum had phoned up. And yeah, spoken yeah. To them and I had phoned up. My mum had phoned up. I w- me and Lucy got on the flight. I said, "Hey, I've got an allergy." Uh, phoned up previous to this they said yeah that's absolutely no problem we'll uh, make an announcement I was like thank you very much I really appreciate that no problem went and sat down and there was no announcement the plane's taken off at this point no, no 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 that, wait, when we got on the flight yeah they were like we don't know what you're talking about oh yeah right? I mean yeah they, yeah, they yeah. started off by saying yeah we don't know but after what? a bit like we don't do that someone said no we don't do that um, and you're like, well, <laughs> no, but I'm I mean, not gonna die. <laughs> even even past that, right? We got by that, and we got to a point where they were like, oh no, we'll, we'll say okay, it. Okay, we'll, do it, we'll yeah. say it. Sorry, whatever, right? Or no, no, sorry. You, no. These people <laughs> never say sorry, but they were like, okay, we'll do it. Um, so we went and sat down. The plane has literally taken off. People could definitely be in at this point, mm-hmm. and we're like, right, okay, there's something wrong. Press the button. Um, the guy comes and we're like, we could make an announcement. We're like, no, we don't do that. We're like, what do you mean you don't do that? You've already agreed you're going to do this. We've went through this. You're going to do this. And they're Meanwhile, like, no, we're not. I'm, we're I don't not know what do you it. were like. You were pretty chill, but I'm sweating my pan and thinking, I'm going to need to whack, whack an EpiPen <laughs> in Tom because he's going to go into anaphylaxis. Someone will eat nuts, you know? It's a huge plane. It was a huge plane. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm sitting in the middle, the middle row. To my right is Lucy and the window. And to my left is a French guy in a suit, quite a like older gentleman, very distinguished yeah. looking, <laughs> um, sits very reserved, does not acknowledge anything that's going on around him. Yeah. Um, and uh, this this guy walks off, like the guy, the the uh, flight assistant walks off, like nah, we're not doing that, as if like nah, pff, not yeah, bothering with us. <laughs> I'm like okay, uh, I don't know how to handle this situation. I like said it, I don't know what to do. He's like not doing it. I don't know who the guy next to me is at all. We hadn't and, spoken to him at Yeah, all. we hadn't spoken to him yet. Maybe just like said, like, hello, sorry, this is our seat or whatever. He makes like this gesture, like this like, like hand gesture would be like, come here to a flight attendant. The same guy that was talking to me. He says, come here and then like points like, you stand here while mm-hmm. I talk to you. And this flight attendant comes over, right? Kind of like, oh, whatever. And he starts like talking to him in French really, really, really fast. Like, da 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 like so fast. Yeah. Um, and this guy's like, whoa, no, and th- th- this guy's not stopping. He's just going at it. He's going so fast. And then this other guy goes, okay. And he walks off and he makes an announcement to say <laughs> there is someone on this flight with an allergy to nuts, all nuts, peanuts, tree nuts. Please do not open any of these products on the plane. <laughs> and I'm looking at this guy like, what did you do? <laughs> what did you just say to him? I wonder um, if he was like a millionaire. And I have no idea. Like well, I spoke to him afterwards. <laughs> I was like, oh, hi, I really appreciate you doing that for me. He was like, oh, no problem. Um, I was like, uh, oh, so what, like, what's bringing you to, uh, to Rome? And he's like, oh, I'm, I just came back from uh, Scotland. We were actually on the first plane with him and going to the next one. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was a businessman that he just, he, he just said market stuff. Just big <laughs> market stuff. Yes, I think I was still like having in a flaky. Shock, yeah. <laughs> um, but big shout out to that guy. Yeah. Hope he's doing well because I like him. It's abysmal though that you were treated like an annoyance. Yeah. Like you are, you're doing this to us type yeah. thing. Um, I mean, I would rather just be turned away by the airline. Just be yeah. like, don't come on. If they're not going to try, don't come on. Yeah. Um, I've seen like um, people complaining about this very thing. So I've seen articles saying that oh, this company's um, removing nuts from all flights. And the thing is, 
even if they do make an announcement, someone might not hear it. I mean, who listens to announcements? Someone could easily open nuts on the plane still and anyone can buy nuts in the airport, you know, and just go on and, like, there, there's still a possibility that it will happen. Like, you can never you can never be too careful on a flight, you know. But, yeah, I've seen articles of people saying, like, oh, they're banning them on all flights in this airline. And the comments are ludicrous. People saying, well, the person with the allergy shouldn't... Um, inconvenience everyone else's lives and they should just go yeah. by some other mode of transport or just not travel at all they should go by boat or something it's like <laughs> can you imagine trying to travel to like asia or something by boat just because you've got an allergy Anywhere. it's just so people can eat nuts in a four hour journey or like a 10 hour journey like people can go without nuts for the day you know yeah it's not a necessity to life but what is a necessity to life for you is that people just don't eat it for however long you know yeah. it's one flight can people not just be a bit considerate? I mean, now that you're saying it, right? I mean, I may as well just be transparent. I think you're an absolutely, like, completely inferior person to anyone. Mm -hmm. If you you have that little compassion to be like, yeah, I would rather this person travel by a different mode of transport than I just not eat a Snickers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, how, how pathetic. Um, what and to lack think of that, willpower. Yeah, these are the same kind of people that would be like, oh, you're, that, that's just because your immune system's weak or whatever. No, yeah. you're weak. You have you can't say no to food, you idiot. <laughs> just stop eating nuts. Like just for a, like, yeah. it's like an hour, maybe a couple hours. These yeah. flights aren't long. You don't need to worry. You can get on the other side. You can eat whatever you want. Yeah. Just chill out for a bit. Um, I shouldn't be expected to not yeah. kill someone. I'll do oh, what I man. want. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, oh. But I feel like these are the same kind of people that would also get on the plane and not wear a mask because it's like, oh, it's my right. But also, you're paying for a flight. You're not paying for your like your philosophy to be heard and seen. Do you I don't I mean? think that is the case though because I think these people are just the same people that are uneducated about what allergies really are and how serious they can be. They're probably the people that are thinking, well, just because that person um, will get a scratchy throat on the plane... It doesn't mean I shouldn't get to eat what I want, yeah. you know? That's probably what they're thinking. Their Stupid people. Their logic is, oh, well, you know, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And yeah. there needs to be wide-scale education about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with that. So uh, uh, we should maybe, like, start... We should start well, a petition or something. Is it, I think we is should. It even, I think we should... Go for it. Like, is it even the lack of education though? Like, do you think even if a lot of people knew about it, they would, would stop? They care? Like, cl clearly, when told not to do something, they don't want to not do something. Mm -hmm. They get annoyed by that. Mm -hmm. So these people just don't care. Yeah. Um. Like, I don't know. It's it's like just there's it's just so much of it. Like they, when that when that girl did die on that flight, uh, the the absolute like tragic story that it is. People were commenting like, well, it's the parents' fault for taking mm. her on the flight. Like, what what kind of attitude can someone have to think that's okay yeah. to say? Uh, it's so easy to be detached from stories like yeah. these, you they know? Didn't they didn't take their kid inside a volcano yeah. that's erupting. It's they a didn't take their kid to, like, a war zone. On, yeah, know? they took their kid on the flight to go on holiday to, like, Disneyland or whatever. Yeah. It was supposed to be a safe journey, and they lost a kid, and people were like, yeah, that's, their, that's the parents' That's, fault. like, at, at that um, rate, you can say... Oh well, that kid um, got hit by a car. It's the parents' fault because they should keep him inside all the time and, yeah. and coddle him and make sure that he's always safe, you know. Yeah. But you can't always live your life in fear, you know. You, yeah. Like we came to Spain to try and have a like great time yeah. and do something different with our lives and learn a language and things like that. And imagine you just hadn't gotten this opportunity because. Can't fly on planes. Some people can't, can't eat nuts can't for go an on hour, planes you know. Because some stupid apes can't stop <laughs> eating nuts on a plane. Um, but yeah, first of all, again, I need to like give big up to the the good companies that have been really great. British Airlines had had been terrible in British the past. British Airways. Uh, what did I say? Airlines. Uh, British Airways had been terrible in the past. Like just like straight up refusal. Uh, but we phoned up British uh, Airways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to come to Spain, because mm -hmm. it was literally the only plane coming. Yeah. So if we wanted to come out, that was the only one we could get. Yeah. So I was phoning them, and they were like, yeah, that's no problem. No like, no, no big deal at all. And I was like, what? This is blowing my mind. Mm -hmm. We got on the plane, I said to them, and they were like, yep, yeah, absolutely no problem. They they went, I just asked they for them to make an announcement. They had a proper, like, they knew what they were doing, yeah. Out, yeah. 
and the, like they're they're making jokes like oh don't you worry like all that, and, like they get like do you know what I mean yeah. banter and they're having fun like just like really top notch people on the yeah, job yeah, they yeah. went they've like they cleaned down the aisle washed it down gave me some napkins or uh, like uh, yeah. wet wipes and said here you go just in case anything goes down mm-hmm. whatever if you need anything just give us a shout at any point um in fact do you know what do you want to go into the big aisle seat just next to the door so that you can get <laughs> out straight away I was like, what? <laughs> what? what? This is too much. I, I honestly felt like I was royalty for a wee bit. Yeah. Um, they made that announcement straight yeah. away. And three then again, times or and something. then again, yeah. yeah. They made that announcement so many times. Um, and they even checked the ingredients of the food that they gave yeah. you, like the biscuits and things. They double checked yeah. them, which I've never seen any checked of them it do. Checked before they even handed it out and said, we're not going to hand it out until, unless you can get these yeah. Yeah. in case there's something in it. Can how get amazing and you is that? It and that's, do you know, we're we're gobsmacked at how nice that is. That but was incredible. That's just how it should be. That I mean, should be yeah, the standard. It still, it still should be appreciated when it's done. Yeah. So thank you, British yeah, Air, uh, Airways. Airlines. Airways. <laughs> thank you, British Airways, for doing it. I appreciate it. And... On behalf of pretty Did much you feel everyone, safe? Yeah. yeah, I felt safe. I felt great. Um, I also felt pretty good because everybody was wearing masks and you weren't really supposed to eat on plane anyway, so that was pretty good. <laughs> but I'm not even demanding that much. I just want to not die on a plane. Um, also, we flew with a company called Wiz Airlines. Wiz Airways. What well, airline? Wiz. Wiz. Yeah, just Wiz. I think it's just called Wiz. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I don't know. Uh, where that even flies to and from, but we got it from London, London to Moldova. To Moldova yeah. um, but that was a really good one. Yeah, they really good. took it seriously. Yeah. Um, and honestly, they made the announcement in various languages, yeah. didn't they? Oh, yeah, they made it in Russian three languages. And I don't know what else. They made it in Russian, English, and uh, probably Polish or something. No, uh, Czech, because that's where it's from, or well, Austrian know. maybe. Is that where it's from? I don't know. Whatever their their language is, uh, the the airlines like home basis yeah. they made that um which is awesome so yeah there's good companies out there and if you do have allergies there's some solid ones to go with um it'll definitely treat you good but it's upsetting or, or frustrating that there there isn't like a set standard mm-hmm. for what it should be like and how people should be treated i really hope that that is british airways procedure now um, yeah yeah i think it must be because we were on two flights the and they flights. nailed it both times yeah yeah um, completely different staff on both and they were great so I think from now on we should make sure we go with a company like that yeah and yeah try and yeah. not have a freak out every time we yeah. fly again even British Airways before mm-hmm. where they were just like no don't come on mm-hmm. don't come on the flight they were one that was just like nah don't do it. if you have allergies we don't want you on the plane do you remember I still appreciate that do That's you remember we were flying to London one year and um, I don't know who we were with but <laughs> they'd made I think they'd made the announcement eventually but we were going with Tom's family, and I don't know if it was your brother. Yeah, it was your brother <laughs> was sitting in the row in front of us, and you literally thought that he'd opened like a pack of nuts. I don't remember. <laughs> you thought he'd opened a pack of nuts, and you're like, John, what are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, I can't remember what he was eating. It was like, like those dried peas or something. I don't know what it oh, was. Oh yeah, he was I eating do remember something that. And we were literally, like, yeah. he just opened a pack of nuts. Your yeah. brother. <laughs> he was, yeah, he's eating like those weird like, um, like trail nuts. mixy beans or whatever. It's just like beans and dust. Absolutely disgusting snack anyway. I don't know how, how anyone could bear that. But yeah, <laughs> the irony We're that John, here, like, my real? brother, opens it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is my own personal experience. I hope you've enjoyed it. But here's a one-on-one on how to handle someone uh, having an allergic reaction. So... If you have a severe allergy, you probably carry EpiPens, right? EpiPens, uh, to my knowledge, are liquid adrenaline. Um, it's some sort of chemical compound uh, in liquid form that will flush the body out and uh, prevent... Uh, it's basically a, a really, really, really intense antihistamine, in a sense. But it's not really an antihistamine at all. Um, but it works similar to them. But it's also like complete ecstasy for the body um and it's like a it's it's the cure in a sense to anaphylaxis your body going into anaphylaxis so i eat something like a nut my body goes into anaphylaxis where it shuts down and tries to protect itself from what it thinks is like a poison 
Um, and then I need an EpiPen to prevent the body from shutting down because obviously it isn't a poison and it's not dangerous to eat. And EpiPens aren't always... Yeah, EpiPens are not 100% like successful, successful yeah. at all, actually. Yeah. Uh, but it's the, definitely the best thing you can get. Yeah. Um, There's still a, a chance that you could just yeah. die. <laughs> yeah, so I, if I'm eating a nut, if someone has eaten a nut, they might show like swelling on the outside of their body. It might show uh, like uh, skin breaking out and bleeding even. Um, there's tons of stuff like that. Their eyes might roll back. Um, they might go pale because they're not getting any oxygen, um, which is a seriously dangerous point because your brain could be uh, starving from oxygen and that would like completely wreck your body. Yeah. Um, so, so did you get brain damage after a Or, or just die. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people definitely do get brain damage. People mm-hmm. have uh, had anaphylaxis and they've never been able to walk again and stuff yeah. like that. Um, it's Jeez. awful. It's tragic. Um, but yeah, if you see someone that looks like they could potentially be in that situation, check to see if they have an EpiPen. A lot of people even wear a wristband. It's like a little, uh, like, like a wristband that has like a little metal plate on it, and it might say what their allergies are. It yeah. has like the little uh, star sign that's yeah. medical. Yeah, this is just an indicator that yeah. says that it will say on it that they have yeah. an allergy. Maybe even check like if they've got a wallet on them, they might have something on it. Or if you like do the thing where you tap their phone and it comes up with a medical medical ID thing mm-hmm. on an iPhone. Uh, some people put it in there. I've put mine in there. Um, have you? Yeah, yeah, of oh, course. I didn't know that. So if you like tap mine, it says like gives you my emergency contact. It'll phone the police, put mm-hmm. in a location. I don't know what it does, but it does a yeah. bunch. It says I have an allergy to eggs and nuts. Use an EpiPen immediately if you found me in this situation. Um, I might even say where I've got my EpiPen on me. I keep my EpiPen on me all the times, yeah, all the times, all the time. All, yeah, two EpiPens on all the time, one and a backup, and um, it's completely safe and like definitely suggested that you use both EpiPens uh, in a situation. Yeah, where someone's taking yeah. reaction. So you decap. So there's lots of different EpiPens and lots of different brands that make EpiPens. We should link a video as well. Yeah, which I'll put a bunch of links better, in, the, yeah. in the description. Pop off the back, take it out. Um, and it's an auto injector. So they're so they're in a case. They might not always be in a case though. Oh okay. So some of them aren't always in cases. So oh, if it's okay. in a case, definitely take out the case. Yeah. But they, they always have a cap on the very back, yeah. which you should take off first. That allows the auto injector to work. Mm-hmm. Then jab it into a fleshy part of the body. Uh, it's suggested, the thigh. yeah, to put it in the thigh because it's a big area of fat and the blood can get around the body really quickly. And go straight through the clothes. Oh, it yeah. can pierce any clothes. Yeah. So no matter what this person's wearing, just go straight through the clothes. Don't take time yeah, like, stripping little, them off or anything. Just a little good go piece of it. trivia. They were developed initially by the US military. So they were, the needle is like a patented design that can pierce through, I don't know how many like millimetres of aluminium but it can pierce through aluminium Crazy. so many millimeters or point millimeters so don't, don't worry if they're wearing hefty clothes anything. yeah um i've seen photos of people like going through phones with the wow. with an, an, an event like it will just destroy anything but i mean don't go through a phone try and find the, an area where it's yeah. like you you know that's going to go through yeah. bang it in it's all injecting leave it in for like a couple seconds so you but, hold it you slam it in and yeah. hold it for how long is it well it Ten will seconds? probably take like a second yeah. But just hold it in hold just it in, in case. Hold it for 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, instantly. As soon as you find the person, try and do that yeah. as soon as Don't possible. Don't sit and wait around yeah. and see if, Don't they're, phone an if ambulance. they're having a reaction. Do not do anything like yeah. that. Do not, like, phone emergency contacts. Just do yeah. it. Just do it. First off, don't, just don't the think about it. The quicker, the better. Just the do quicker, it. the yeah. more likely their chance of surviving yeah. is. Because yeah. keep in mind, what you're doing is you're possibly saving someone's life. Yeah. You're not, like maybe helping them out you're not helping yeah. them you're like and you're not maybe you're, damaging them yeah. you're you do literally <laughs> potentially saving someone's life and the yeah. longer you take the higher the chance someone's going to die and it's like you've got a maximum of three minutes to do all these things so yeah. do them all quick so you want to bang in that fn you want to phone an ambulance straight after say give your location say this person is having an allergic reaction um, please come to this as soon as possible. Whatever. I've administered the first day. Yeah. Um, and then once you hang up, you want to, uh, if they have an emergency contact that you know available, like if you've uh, clicked their phone and it says, I don't know, my emergency contact is my mum or their dad or whatever, phone that. Say, this is the situation. This is where um, we are. They've taken a reaction. Maybe put them on loudspeaker and then start to administer the second yeah. EpiPen. 
You want to try and get that in as quick as possible. The only situation in which you would not put in a second FPN is if the person has stood up and said, here, mate, please do not put in that second yeah. FPN. Or if they've woken up even, or if they're, if they're, they're just up, coming around. If or... they've just woken up, though, just woken up, yeah. and they're just barely there, You'd I would still, still say yeah. put in the second FPN. Yeah. Because unless you don't know how... Yeah, unless they're saying to you, please don't put that second FPN in, the first one was sore enough, right? Don't... Don't stop yeah. because again you're probably saving someone's life. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you should, you should most of the time just do yeah, two. Do two. Yeah, do two. I mean, give it like at least a minute between the two, but you'll probably be a minute yeah. or so on the phone so, to an ambulance anyway. So you'd want to do it after anyway. But uh, yeah, the, an epipen because it's pure adrenaline. A lot of situations actually result in cardiac arrest. That's why you want to get the ambulance there as soon as possible after you put in the first one yeah. because it's so much adrenaline for the body to handle that it be, can be quite dangerous. They'll probably have cardiac, yeah. Run to cardiac arrest. So, yeah. yeah, you either don't do anything and they die or you do something and they get cardiac arrest. So it's a weird But they've lose, got a better chance with of cardiac living. arrest, yeah. Yeah, you're definitely... Because if they've taken anaphylaxis, they're going to die, you know. Yeah. But if you're, if cardiac you're young, arrest, they've yeah. got a chance, yeah. I mean, if you're a young, younger person, if you're below even 40, cardiac arrest isn't going to be that bad for you anyway, if, if you've got uh, the right medical people Happens coming. People, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've, you've banged in possibly the second FN or they're awake, right? If they're awake, you've nailed it, well done, you've just saved someone's life, you should feel good about that. Mm -hmm. If they're not awake, put in the second FN. Also feel good about that because you're also trying to save someone, which yeah. must be an amazing feeling to yeah. try. Um, and if it doesn't work, then you tried your best. Yeah, you, you, know? you did it. I mean, you yeah, did something. Well you didn't do nothing. You could have just left them. Um, but yeah, put in the second event. Also, if if there's nobody around that's like a doctor <coughs> or anything, like don't don't go looking. If if you see oh, someone yeah, that's taking a reaction, go don't go. Is anyone a doctor? No. Is anyone a medical professional? A you just do it. Can do just the first person. Absolutely nothing in this situation. Yeah, everyone can do this the exact same way. Yeah. So uh, as long as. If you're the first person there and the first person on the scene, then yeah. you do it. You know, don't go around looking for people because you need to do it as quick as possible. Yeah, a hundred percent. I definitely agree with that. Um, you can go get EpiPen trained if you want, if you really want to do it. But I've, I've pretty much just told you everything. So unless you just want the certificate of being EpiPen trained, you've just learned it all. Mm -hmm. um, watch the, YouTube uh, tutorials watch, and things I'm, like yeah, that. Yeah, I'll link a bunch of them below. Um, also, being uh, FBN trained will just give you the information of the time. But what I got told when I was young, when I first knew I had allergies, it's quite different from what they tell you now. And it mm. constantly changes. If you check it literally yeah. on a monthly just basis, like they'll give you medical. different information. Yeah. Um, so that's why I stick by the one that's just like, get it done as fast as possible yeah. because that that is the highest level of success mm. so far, is that if you just get everything done quick, and then I wait for the ambulance afterwards. If you could get something to get rid of your allergies, would you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, I don't want to. What? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, like, of course. If you asked a blind person if you could see, yeah, you would want that. If it was like a yeah, surgery or something. Yeah. You get a surgery. Yeah, of course, yeah, to get rid of allergies. Yeah. Yeah. Just wondered. That's not. That, yeah, of course I would. Yeah, that was a silly question. <laughs> what do you? Yeah, of course. Just yeah. because you're like scared of surgeries and stuff. I don't yeah, but I'm. All, I don't want to die from a die. peanut. Yeah. Like I don't want an egg to be the death of me. And would you try them? Like nah. When it worked. Definitely you would just wouldn't stay try away them. From no. Stuff. Just wouldn't fear of, like my life on planes. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah. But I def yeah, definitely. I'd, try chocolate, I'd pay good money to get that like an allergy yeah. reduction or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's not bothered me at all. Yeah. Like when people are like, oh man, you can't eat chocolate. What? That mm. must suck. It doesn't suck. I don't know what it tastes like. <laughs> How do I know it sucks? Yeah. Like fair enough, I forgot like a chocolate bar once and it was really good. <laughs> and then I got told I had allergies and I was like, oh, I'll never get to eat chocolate again. Yeah. That would suck. But it's not like I ever knew. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've never, it's not like being allergic to jumping on a trampoline where when people are jumping on a trampoline, you can see them having fun. No one eats a chocolate bar and goes, oh my God, I'm having a so much bar, fun. Tom, yeah, you look, you look like zoned out, you don't look <laughs> conscious. Like I don't want to like completely lose consciousness eating a chocolate bar. I mean, I literally would lose consciousness yeah. eating a chocolate bar. Um, Maybe I'm allergic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please don't make jokes about that. Sorry, sorry, that's so <laughs> um, But yeah. So when someone goes to the hospital after having an allergic reaction, after going into anaphylaxis, what they're probably going to do 
when you arrive when they arrive at the hospital is put them on a drip of more adrenaline. So after having two EpiPens administered, administered, mm-hmm. yeah, um, they're probably still going to get more adrenaline put in their body when at the uh, the uh, hospital because that might not actually be a high enough dosage to combat the amount of histamines that are now in the body and the, like the, the amount the body has now changed. Mm-hmm. So the best, like literally, uh, so buying two EpiPens in, you shouldn't worry about it. You should just do it. You should do it because they're probably going to have more after that anyway mm-hmm. because the body is freaking out and has no idea what's going on. Um, and the quicker you get it done, the quicker you could prevent someone from being uh, having brain damage or losing an ability to use a limb or whatever, or like they could be losing memories and mm-hmm. losing so much, and it's honestly just tragic. Um, so yeah, F- thankfully, uh, fortunately, thankfully and fortunately, <laughs> I just mashed them together. I've never been in the situation where, in fact, I never, I have been in the situation. I've never been in the situation where I've needed an event. I have been in the situation where I've taken allergic reactions, but in hospital under like clinical procedure. Yeah. And it was deliberate. Yeah. Just to see what happens, <laughs> <laughs> um, as like a like a test subject. When did you do that? What age were you? Um, the last time I did it, I would have been maybe seventeen. What? Yeah. No, that's how we were been going out. Yeah, I mean, I think it probably would have been. 17, yeah. So what? I just can't imagine you voluntarily doing something like that. No. I can't imagine you Do you know what happened? Or is it too, too woozy? Too woozy information? Well, it depends on what you want to do. You get woozier than yeah, me. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Yeah, I don't, 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 don't <laughs> say that then. <laughs> um, that, that's, that's exactly what I'm asking because Tom just can pass out oh, yeah. at the thought of medical things. So if, uh, I just, I'm just baffled at the thought that you would voluntarily have an allergic reaction and get I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily get a deliberately get an allergic reaction. It was test to see. Yeah, but were te- you not sure that you were going to take some no, reaction? No, they, they were like, "Nah, you're probably not going to take a allergic <laughs> reaction." And uh, so it was test to see how allergic I am to things and how my body reacted yeah. without taking anaphylaxis. The problem is, I pretty much went into anaphylaxis on 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 like zero point zero 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 one percent. Of like an almond, yeah. <laughs> so discovered, yeah, okay. Do you know Let's what? not do that this again. This kid's ruined. <laughs> um, no help in him. <laughs> and it was also to see like how uh, over time people can develop changes over their allergies. Looks like mine got worse a wee bit. Yeah. Which sucks. Um, but I think maybe some other ones got better. Maybe like uh, external allergies. Like I was allergic to dogs and cats and horses. Probably not really allergic to them as much. Mm-hmm. Um, that I could still go into anaphylaxis. Through From being a, through ho- yeah, I went really? I went into anaphylaxis by being near a horse as a child. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, because of it has like a sort of like uh like a I guess that has like a dander as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope crazy. you can hear that church bell in the background. That'd be really cool. cool. <laughs> um, we stay right next to a massive cathedral. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Yeah, <laughs> I hope this hasn't been too like miserable and yeah. depressing. And it's something like, that people should learn about though. Like um yeah. It's one of those things where like people get first aid trained and CPR trained. Everyone should get EpiPen trained because it's a common thing um, for people to take reactions, you know? Yeah. I think that, I guess another thing is that people find that a bit weird. Like when you're doing like CPR, you're just like pressing down. Mm -hmm. But when you're using an EpiPen, you're actually using a device. Yeah. Which maybe I feel like it might feel a bit alien to people, I guess, Mm -hmm. or I don't know. But yeah. Um, thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. It was a bit different. Um, a little story time plus some some <laughs> crucial info to keeping yep. people alive in yep. certain situations. But thank yeah. you. Um, yeah. Let's raise awareness for the allergies <laughs> of the world. <laughs> Great ending. Um, also, if you uh, want to hear more about allergies and stuff and you want to hear more stories like that, or like the time I went to the hospital when I was 17, I'd be more than happy to tell it if you actually want to hear that kind of stuff. So yeah, thanks for listening. Adios. Bye. Hasta luego.